to see you. Today I want to talk to you about an article I recently read. This goes under the line of showing us how we are heading for how the times are heading forward. And it's written from the it comes from WND. It was written by Bob Unra. Unrab? I don't know how to pronounce his name. I hope I'm not be butchering it too bad. But it was written on April 21st and it's entitled Biden is demanding Christian doctors perform body mutilations. This is bad for the patients, doctors, and religious liberty. Going on, it says, The Biden administration is demanding that a court order Christian physicians and faith-based hospitals to do body mutilations, also called transgender surgeries, on patients when they are told to. The physicians and hospitals were protected from those requirements most recently by a federal judge's ruling in North Dakota. That decision, U.S. District Judge Peter Welty granted in a case brought by the Religious Sisters of Mercy, it's a Catholic benefit organization and others, uh, as a regre- request to prevent the U.S. Department of Health, Health and Human Services, as well as the EEOC, from enforcing Obamacare requirements. Biden's appeal is in support of Barack Obama's mandate in 2016 that required doctors and hospitals to do transgender surgeries upon mental health professionals upon a mental health professional's referral. Obama provided no conscious or religious exemptions. The demand also has been struck down by a federal court in Wichita Falls, Texas earlier. The the surgeries are intended to change a person's sex, although the concept is a misnomer to begin with, since being male or female is embedded in the human body down to the DNA level. But the requirement was part of the socially progressive effort created by the Obama administration that presumes people have the ability to change. Welty said the court decision is the HHS interpretation of Section 1557 that requires the Catholic plaintiffs to perform and provide insurance coverage for gender transition procedures violates the sincerely held religious brief beliefs without satisfying strict scrutiny under the Religious Freedom Restoration Act. Accordingly, the court pres- per- permanently enjoins and restrains, restrains HHS, the Secretary A's, other divisions, bureaus, agents, officers, commissioners, employees, and anyone from acting in concert or in participation with them, including the successors in office, from interpreting or enforcing Section 1557 or or any implementing regulations thereto against the Catholic plaintiffs in in a manner that would require them to perform or provide insurance coverage for gender transition procedures, including by denying federal fiscal assistance because of of their failure to perform or provide insurance coverage for such procedures, or by otherwise perusing, excuse me, pursuing, charging, or assessing any penalties, fines, assessments, investigations, or other enforcement actions. Now, the Daily Caller Newton's Foundation said the appeal seeks to force religious doctors and hospitals to provide transgender surgeries regardless of religious objections. The appeals puts Javier Basra, the Health and Human Secretary, Services Secretary, a huge promoter of abortion under any circumstances against the sisters and the CBA. Basra earlier fought against the Little Sisters of the Poor in his demand to have them pay for abortion. This is bad for patients, doctors, and religious liberty, Beckett, Beckett Singing Counselor Luke Goodrich said in his in the foundation report to the, of the Biden ap- appeal. The plaintiffs are all religious doctors, hospitals, and clinics who joyfully serve all patients regardless of sex or gender identity. They routinely, routinely provide top-notch care to transgender patients for, for everything from cancer to common cold. They also provide millions of dollars in free, low-cost care to the elderly, poor, and undeserved, underserved care. 
that is jeopardized by the government's attempt to punish them with a multi-million dollar penalties. The Foundation report noted Biden, Vice President Kamala Harris, and Bakara have all stood against the Catholic Little Sisters of Poor in their battle with the Supreme Court to avoid paying for employee, employees' birth control against their religious beliefs. As a California Attorney General in 2014, Harris pushed the Supreme Court to force Hobby Lobby's owners to provide contraception to women in violation of their beliefs. She complained a woman's access to essential services, including conception, sh contraception, should not be restricted because of the religious view of her employer, particularly when the right to these services is protected under, under federal law. Well, when the Supreme Court rejected her opinion, she called the results shameful. In North there, North, in the North Dakota judge concluded compliance with the challenge laws would violate the Catholic plaintiffs' religious beliefs as they sincerely understand them. The exercise of religion involves not only belief and profession, but the performance and or abstinence from physical acts, he sta the judge stated. The EEOC's interpretation of Title VII, which forbids employers from engaging in sex discrimination, requires the CBA and its members to provide insurance coverage for gender transition procedures. The court ruled that that violates their strongly held religious belief without satisfying strict scrutiny. Just the News noted in 2016 that HHS refined redefined Section 1557 of the Obamacare ban insurance plans with gender transition exclusions. But HHS failed to establish an exemption for religious, for religious reasons. The judge said a violation of the Religious Freedom Reformation Act is akin to a violation of their First Amendment rights. Okay, let's go back up to the top and break this down slowly. What we have here is the Biden administration has decided that they want another crack at the apple. Obama, under his administration, went after Hobby Lobby and the Little Sisters of the Poor. The Little Sisters of the Poor being a religious charity and several other charities run their charity based on their religious beliefs. They do not support the idea of transgender surgeries they also do not support the idea of abortion. Now, what the Obama administration said was that's irrelevant. Your religious view should not prevent, stop you from doing what we say you should do. Now, Biden's administration has gone even further. They're flat out trying to get the court to order. Not only do we, should these charities provide insurance for this, but they should provide the actual service. Biden is trying to get the courts to order religious charities, religious hospitals, religious doctors to provide transgender surgeries against their moral beliefs. This would be illegal under the Religious Freedom Reformation Act. It's a violation of their First Amendment. Excuse me. It's a violation of their First Amendment for protections against religious free for, for, for religious freedoms. The Biden administration and just like the Obama administration, they don't really care. What they see as important is their own particular goals. Their goals are to have abortion on demand, transgender surgeries on demand, and your religious beliefs should take second to them. Now, first off, this is a war, basically a war between different rights. Whose rights are more important? Now, in some cases, when you have two rights that are in co conflict, it happens. And the courts decide to find a way to bring what causes the least damage. The reality of this is one of them is a right for a personal protection of their beliefs, and the other one is trying to force them to violate them. In simple view, I would say that the one that is easiest to defend 
would be the rights of the religious group. But I don't know if that's the way it's going to go. Because remember, the Biden administration is also working with Congress to pass the Equality Act, which it does the same thing also. It again tries to force religious people, people that believe in Christ and in God, to perform things that, and do things that they find evil. Now this is a very dangerous road that we're on. Because this is the first steps towards forcing people to violate their religion in order to placate the government and the extremist groups that have taken over the government. Now, I'm, what can you do about this? Pray. With it being in the court, that one you can pray for. With it being in, in front of the, as for the Equality Act, which I've already discussed the problems of it, again, we need to pray. You also need to get a hold of your senators and make sure they understand that you strongly oppose the, the implementation of the Equality Act. Because in the end results, when these laws pass, they will open the door to forcing your churches to provo provide gay marriages. They will force your churches and your doctors to perform surgeries and do things that they find immoral or illegal or, or evil all in the name of progressive views. Now, these are the same progressives that have caused the city of Philadelphia. Hold on, let me double check that. Next tab. Excuse me, the city of Baltimore permanently ended the prosecution of low-level low crimes like prostitution. That article is... From the Epoch Times, it was dated March 28th, 2021, and it was by Zachary Steiner. Thing is, again, what we have here is we have one set of laws that makes standing by your religion illegal, and those are going to be prosecuted, but prostitution and other low-level crimes are not. The low-level crimes include prostitution drug possession, and other things like this. Kind of a interesting mix there. If one set of things that are wrong are no longer prosecuted, and standing by your religion is, kind of gives you an idea where we're heading. Which is the purpose of me bringing this up? I keep telling you, times are changing. What is evil is considered good now. Now here's a perfect example. In this country, we have long held that a person's religious beliefs should not be violated to force them to do things. And, I mean, all the way even including to subjects like the draft or going to war. Conscientious objectors have been allowed to refrain from doing said actions because they violated their deeply held religious beliefs. Now we have the Biden administration saying your religious be beliefs are irrelevant. All that matters to us is you will do what you're told. Even if you find it evil. This is a warning. This is the beginning. This is, well, a very major step towards forcing churches and people of religious beliefs to sacrifice those beliefs to do what the state wants. Now, one other time in history, recently, recent history, has a state government or the, fe the national government told people, give up your religious views. That was under the Nazis in Germany. They told the Jews, give up your view and we'll stop. Give up your religion and we'll stop c coming after you. Same, Basically the same principles being applied here. You will give up your views, you will sacrifice what you believe in, and if you don't, we're going to put you in jail. The question for you is what are you going to do? 
Are you going to give up your beliefs? Are you going to go to get get along? Get along? I can't remember the phrase right now, but are you going to go along to get along? Or are you going to stand up for what you believe in? Now, the Bible is very clear. You're supposed to stand up for what you believe in. You give unto God what is God's. It does not mean telling Caesar, okay, Caesar says he has, we have to do it, so we have to do it. No, you stand up for your beliefs. And that means you have to go to jail or you have to cease being a, a doctor. Now, that's something you need to really think and pray about. But I would believe that the answer is fine. I'd go to jail. Because it's better to go to jail for Christ than to sacrifice your beliefs for Caesar. The times are changing. Are you prepared for those changes? There are some things we can still do to stop this travesty from happening. And that is, you know, as I said, get a hold of your senators. Make sure they know you are strongly opposed to the Equality Act. You know, I always find it sad, the Equality Act or some of these other laws that they pass are given such, you know, how can you be against equality? I'm not against equality. I'm against the idea of forcing people to violate their beliefs. And so should you be. The point is, they give them these names so that they can give you this rationale of you're just against people being treated equal. No. I, again, you need to know what these laws say so that you realize, no, I'm not against people being treated equal. I firmly believe that all people should be treated equal. But I don't believe you should force people to violate their religious beliefs. So, you need to be prepared. You need to tell your senators to vote against it. There's not, depending on what happens in the Senate, right now I'd say there's a very slim chance of this bill passing. It has to get 50, 51 votes, counting uh, the vice president. I don't know, actually it would need 60 votes. Be not counting the vice president because the Republicans will filibuster this. A key comes down to if the Senate gets rid of the filibuster, then you need to be prepared mentally and emotionally for what is coming down. And what is coming down is a lot of violations of your rights. No, some of you will probably not feel this to start with. But as these are the first steps, if you don't sound off now and take stance now, by the time you do, it will be way too late. So, talk, send a letter to your senator. Do not let, tell them not to support ending the filibuster. Tell them not to support the Equality Act unless a religious exemption is included. Stand up for your religious beliefs, or you're going to find your religious beliefs declared illegal. And then you're going to have to conform to a newer version of your beliefs. A new religion. And that new religion will eventually have a leader who will have you worship the beast. Think it over. Again, though, this is just right off the news, and I'm going to keep giving you news updates as things come and step up and show me it's time to pay attention. And this one, the fact that the Biden administration is trying to force doctors to perform mutilations is wrong. When you force people to do things against their beliefs, you're wrong. All right. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I hope it at least motivates you to do something. If you've enjoyed the episode, please hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't subscribed. I would like to put a little caretaking notice in. Recently, I noticed that I had been, I had been a little bit forgetful in my job. I had not updated the BitChute account. Well, BitChute is now fully updated. 
and I will work, do my best not to let it get behind again. So if you do not want to watch on YouTube, you can go to BitChute and see the same shows. Eventually, some shows will be different on the different channels. Both platforms, you can see a listing of different places, different ways you can donate to us. You can donate to support this ministry through Bitcoin, Ethereum, and other methods. And of course, my email is listed so that you can contact me for other mean, other issues. You can, of course, become a patron. You can do this with the information that is listed on this channel. And I hope each and every one of you will, will share this channel with your friends. The more subscribers we get, the quicker we, we get monetized. Once we're monetized, that's when we'll be able to start doing, reaching more people. We will be able to improve our website so that it will have a copy of all of these different videos. We will be able to actually just start growing a little bit better. Maybe even advertise. The point is, subscribing is the easiest way you can support us. And it doesn't cost you anything but a simple click.